Hello, and welcome to Ready Aim Roll. Uh, today got you know, a unboxing to show off, because I received something in the mail about a week ago now, ten days ago, and I have opened it so it's not a blind unboxing. So could it technically be a blind unboxing if it's me? <laughs> Shower thoughts. Um, anyway, we're going to go through what's in the box. Uh, I'll give you a bit of what I think about it, and you know, hopefully that helps you decide whether you want to pick it up for yourself, or maybe you go an alternative route. Um, what we are going to be taking a look at today is Fallout Wasteland Warfare, a tabletop uh, skirmish game from the lovely, lovely people at Modiphius. Um, yeah, this is the two-player starter set, as it says on the box. Um, there you go. So, this will give you enough minis to start off with a human survivor faction. And, don't know why I did uh, air quotes there, because that's what they are, they're survivors. But it gives you enough minis to give you humans and super mutants. Which also means, if you're playing on your own, you can also play super mutants as AI, or even humans as AI, if you want. Um, and they can also be used as minis for games like Zona Alpha, which is kind of why I bought this box. <laughs> um, so yeah. Obviously, lid's already off, so let's crack this thing. Lid's already off. Why would we crack it open if the lid's already off? Anyway, what we have greeting us first, well, at least on my, because I, like I say, opened it, I've shuffled some things around, but what you get is two 1.5 by 3 foot mats which can be, uh, uh, well, not stuck together, but placed down together to create one three foot by three foot play mat, which is great, actually. Um, these are quite nice quality. They are paper, um, because having a, a thick neoprene mat is A, expensive, and B, heavy. Uh, so... You know, it's it's just nice. You know, Baron. I will I will preface this all by saying as well that it should be noted that this is the sort of thing that you're going to be seeing at places like Waterstones and Game, and you know, this isn't. You know, I mean, you will often find it at places that are more niche, obviously, but uh, a lot of this. This box especially is done to get people into the hobby who maybe wouldn't normally be interested in the hobby. You know, your standard Fallout fans who maybe see this on a shelf at, like I say, game and go, ooh, that's interesting, what's this all about? Buy it and get into tabletop gaming, which is what we need. We always, we always want more people getting into this hobby, because it is a wonderful hobby. Um... Anyway, you get two of these. You get a single A4 piece of uh, quite nice gloss paper. Um, it didn't need to be gloss paper. This could have easily just been a printed off bit of paper in colour. <laughs> uh, because it's just, it's an errata sheet. Uh, rules changes and FAQs and things like that. Um, so, yeah. It is nice that they put this in the box because you know, it's something that you might need, you know. Um, and Modifius do put their errata on their website for free. Um, Modifius actually put out a lot of their resources for free, uh, as actually do a large chunk of more independent tabletop gaming companies. <laughs> uh, so you're not having to 
buy the online thing that you've already bought physically. <coughs> Games Workshop. <coughs> um, yeah, anyway. Um, moving on. <laughs> um, I mean, no, no, it's just upside down. Um, and somehow stuck to something. Don't know how that happened. Anyway, um, hmm. I think that's a bit of tape or something. I don't know. Uh, next, you get your getting acclimated guide. Um, this is very much meant for people who are brand new to tabletop gaming. Um, there's a couple little bits in here for people just who maybe aren't new to tabletop gaming, just new to this game. Um, but even then, uh, a lot of this, to me, is just quite self-explanatory. So it's just like, yep, yeah, cool. I I don't know what I'm looking at, but I know what I'm looking at type thing. Um, as it goes through dice and cards and what different things mean. Like, even, even if I didn't understand, even if I don't know what all this means... I at least have an idea of what it could mean, you know, like straight away from playing things like X-Wing and Legion and a lot of the fancy flight like Star Wars stuff, my brain immediately goes, oh, they're probably dice, uh, dice faces, things like that. Anyway, next you have your rule book. Quite a thick one, this, uh, 58 pages. Um... Just, uh, actually two pages longer than, uh, Zona Alpha was, so. But this is quite nicely laid out. Uh, where Zona Alpha was a great book, it was quite, quite light on it. illustration that helped out with understanding the game. Whereas this, you are getting pages of explanations and diagrams all sorts um, and quick reference sheet which is great always love a quick reference sheet in the back of my books helpful um, so yeah Nice, nice book. Again, really nice quality for, you know, something that comes in a starter box. This is, it's not, you know, obviously hardback book quality. It's not even the same quality as Zona Alpha, but it's front covers, relatively nice, light paper slash cardstock. Um, just same for this one, really. Um, though this is slightly thinner actually um yeah but this book is your campaign handbook so you've read through getting acclimated you've gone through the walls this is for if you want to start getting into the game and going ooh this looks fun let's play more um and it gives you plenty of scenario ideas uh plenty of you know Ideas for, for full campaigns, even. So, you know, it's good. Nice um, card anatomy here, which, again, really helpful to you know, literally just flip over the back of this book and know what each of your faces means, um, or at least what the different things on your cards mean. Next, we come to... Tokens. Um, you get plenty of tokens in this game. It is a very token-heavy game, which I'm personally not a huge fan of. Uh, I think that's just because I have been a Warhammer gamer for 15 years now. Yeah, it's coming on 15 years, uh, which is terrifying um yeah a nice stack of these lads 
obviously they don't come in baggies. Uh, they you, they do come on punch boards, so you do have to punch these out. Um, however, the baggies do come with the game. These are all from the game that came wrapped, which is I love that because, as I said, this is a fucking ass ton of little cardboard gubbins, and they will go missing. They will. They do. Um, so it's it's nice that Modiphius have taken the the stress of going. Ah, I don't have any baggies to put my stuff in. There we go. Um, so yeah, this is great. They even give you enough baggies for your cards. This deck is reasonably thick. Um, how thick is it? It's about half as thick as my... I'm not going to finish that reference. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, just just go watch Housing Ultimate Abridged. Uh, I think that's episode two. You'll understand the reference. <laughs> uh, anyway, this is items. It is objectives. It is quests. It is all the different things that you want to play a game. Um, and it's also my understanding that basically everything in this box can also be used for the RPG, which Modiphius also puts out, um, which is nice, really. You also get your cards for your characters, both player controlled and AI. Um, so, yeah, it's quite nice. You can see AI stuff on this side. I don't want to take them out because, yeah, you can't be fucked. Um, you also get dice, obviously. It is a tabletop game that uses dice, mostly D12s with a D20, which is quite interesting. Um, I don't know why it tickles me so much seeing, seeing games that don't use D6s. Because uh, obviously, obviously D&D uses D20s. Um, but as far as as far as tabletop wargaming, I mean, especially for dice pool type games like this, I guess D sixes aren't as common. Um, but yeah, it's nice. Always nice to see a different sort of dice shape being used. Though it's not quite as I don't think it's quite as fun as something like Malifaux, which uses decks of cards. Um, I do want to get back into that at some point. Um, very briefly, about f five, six years ago now, uh, me and one of my friends uh, from back in Plymouth got into it. We played a couple games, and we sort of fell off it. It wasn't even like we didn't enjoy it. it that enjoyed it? Ugh, that is awful English. Ugh. It's almost like talking about Plymouth produced my uh, intelligence for a moment. <laughs> Which, uh, I ain't saying anything more on that. <laughs> um, anyway, next, now we've talked about the, the boring bits, let's talk about the fun bits. Let's talk about the minis, like this little alien dude. Um, so I will mention that these, these miniatures are made of PVC. Um, Modiphius do put out a version, most of, I will say, basically everything that isn't in this box is made of resin. So if you are, you know, if you buy this box and you want to expand your collection, uh, everything else is resin, which is nice because these PVC minis are not terrible, but they're not great. Um, you know, it's just not. You know, they're serviceable for for what the purpose of this box is. Get 
average, the average, you know, layman into this game if they're already into Fallout. Um, whereas I sort of came in the other way around. I got into Fallout and then went, ooh, there's a tabletop game for this? Yes, give it to me. <laughs> um, though saying that, I have known about it for a while. I knew about it basically on release and just haven't got around to picking it up because it's you know, it's a 50 quid box. <laughs> um, yeah, next. In terms of miniatures, we have this awesome, awesome looking Death Claw. Um, yeah. He's a, he's a big one as well. Um, yeah, a good, good size miniature on this. Um, the horn is slightly out of shape. Um, so the head is slightly wonky, as you'll see there. Um, to me, um, I could easily just put that down to horns grow weird, you know. Things happen in the wild. Um, so, you know, it's not like it's an awful, awful miscast. It's just the, the plastic's just a bit not quite in the place it should be. Um, obviously, this horn here, where my finger is, is perfectly fine. Um, it's just the other horn that's a little bit low and a little bit bent towards the face. But again, uh, that's you know no huge issue. I could even just leave that there. And if I didn't want to leave it there, I could just dip it in some hot water, not boiling, but you know, just hot enough to put your hand in. Um, just hold it there for a few seconds. The plastic will become pliable, and you will be able to move that where you want it. Um, don't move it without doing that because that will stress the plastic and you do not want to break your miniatures because these miniatures are expensive. Well, these aren't. Um, and I have just noticed some of the quills on the back are also bent. Um, so again, just a, just a, you know, dip in a bit of hot water. Um. I mean, I'll probably be dipping these in hot water anyway, because as with resin miniatures, you do want to clean them before painting them. Just quick dip in hot soapy water to get rid of that mold release. Um, it's not as much of a notice on these, but on a lot of resin miniatures, you can see just, it's just grimy feeling. Um, and that's just the mold release from where they've poured the resin into the mold, the resin has cured, and they have just peeled out the the product. Um, so yeah, it's just it's just good practice. Which um, the rule book, I think it is, does go through that, which is really nice. Um, yeah, assembling your models. Um, so yeah, it, I love that. It just goes, hey, resin models do need to be cleaned. I mean, I mean if you're just going to leave them as they are, you don't necessarily need to clean them. But who wants to leave resin models or any models as they are? <laughs> That's just boring. Um, yeah. Speaking of uh, leaving things as they are, this suit's cool. Um, because, yeah. I don't know what that was. Leaving th things as they are, bringing out this dude. I don't know what my brain's up to. Um, I'm still coming down from the hype that was uh, the seventh series of Clone Wars. <laughs> Which, go watch it if you haven't already. Um, I might. I think I'm probably the last person on the planet to still watch it who wanted to watch it. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah. You got this guy? Which, you know... He's pretty cool. Big ass Newton with a pipe rifle. 
uh, automatic pipe rifle, probably. Uh, with the big drum mag. Um, you could easily just make that a, uh, just pipe rifle, standard, uh, semi-automatic pipe rifle with a drum mag if you wanted to. Uh, you do get two mute hounds. Look at these lads. They are chunky. Um, really nice detail on these. Um, uh, I put them under another camera, but a, I'm not that skilled at editing, and B, there's plenty of images elsewhere online. <laughs> um, but yeah, these these are nice dogs, nice sculpts as well. Um, probably, I think, just a overall theme of this box is the detail is very soft on some models. It's not so bad on these, but the more particularly your survivors they are very soft as far as detail goes um next you've got sledge <laughs> i think is the name they gave this guy cuz big sledgehammer um i suppose on him uh sledgehammer is ever so slightly bent uh which again pvc it's very It's quite elastic uh, in the right areas. Again, wouldn't want to bend it as is. Heat this up again. Even then, it you know I wouldn't say it needs too much heating up because it's you know, it's only slightly bent and it sort of kind of does convey a bit of motion in the model, even though it does that already in the standard sculpt. Um, next up is. This dude, Aviator, dual-wielding uh, pipe pistols. Long pipe pistols, I think they'd be. Um, very cool pose. Um, that's going to take... Those those pipe pistols are going to be nice. Weather them up. Uh, just some dirty browns and, you know, all those sort of colours. They'll look lovely. Um... Yeah, quite cool pose for Super Mutant. Um, there we go. And now we move on to the quote unquote heroes, the survivors, the you know the good guys, kind of. <laughs> um, I'm gonna skip the first model in the tray. You get this guy with a, another pipe rifle. Um, I will I will point out here that you may not have noticed, uh, but all the bases, all of the bases are quite nicely uh, scenic. I can't remember what other word I was going to use. Uh, so yeah, uh, you do not have to worry about putting down gubbins because that's already done for you. Um, and that's also the case for the uh, the resin models. They all have their own themed scenic base, which is awesome. Um, this woman in a battered and beaten duster coat, trench coat looking thing. Um, there we go. Quite nice, actually. Um, that's going to be an interesting one again wooden sort of looking floor with a lantern um so yeah that's gonna take quite a nice wash i think uh yeah get in there uh got a guy in a hoodie and some kind of cowl hood thing um belt 
with all sorts on it. He's got a pipe pistol uh, and a stim pack, which is yeah, quite a static mini as far as pose. Um, but he is just a bog standard survivor, so you don't don't want anything too fancy. I also think that will take away from the more heroic minis. Speaking of heroic minis, you have the Soul Survivor um, with a slightly bent rifle barrel. Whoops. She's fine. <laughs> uh, pistol. If you played Fallout 4, you'll recognize the pistol. And you'll also maybe notice... Come on. Come on. You might be able to notice there on her wrist is her Pip-Boy, which is very nice. Um, that's going to be a ball like to paint. <laughs> Um, quite a bland, scenic base, but still quite nice. Um, you know, just an easy, easy dry brush on that one, I reckon. And moving back across the box, you get this absolute unit. Um, power armor. Uh, with, I think that's the Brotherhood of Steel logo on the front. Which is quite nice. Um, so yeah, this guy is gonna paint up real nice. Um, arguably, kind of a large base for him personally. Uh, so there is that. Mm. I would have maybe put mine on slightly smaller base. Are they the same? They are the same. Um, yeah. I don't know. I think maybe it's just that they they are true scale miniatures rather than heroic scale. So this guy's quite, you know, standard proportioned, right? Whereas a space marine like this, you know, would probably be, you know, have larger legs, larger arms, uh, and fill out the space a little bit more. I uh, don't know, just a personal thing. Um, yeah. Everything else feels like it fills out the base nice enough. Even the mutants, weirdly. Even though they are mutants of the same size. Which is, I don't know. Don't know what that is. Um, anyway. Finally, we come to the most important piece in the box. More important than the rules, more important than the dice, or the cards. Doggo. Yes, you get a mini for dog meat, which I love. I love that you get dog meat. He did arrive slightly bent, but I literally warmed him up on arrival, because, you know... <laughs> He was doing a little balancing act on his feet. Um, yeah, he looks great. Again, texture is very soft, especially on his the main bulk of his body. It's quite soft and devoid of detail. Um, but at this scale, I can sort of see why. Don't know if the resin model's got a bit more definition on his fur, but... I mean, there's enough definition where it counts around his face, around his neck, and on his tail, a bit on his back legs, but, you know, everything else is very soft, almost non-existent detail. Um, so, yeah, those are the minis that can be found in Fallout Wasteland Warfare. Um, the... The box itself costs 45 great British pounds. Um, it is out of stock on the Diffius website, unfortunately. Um, I did have to buy this on Amazon, uh, which, honestly, I'd rather buy it from somewhere like Modiphius, because, you know, smaller businesses 
I don't really like supporting Amazon. <laughs> um, like, I have no problem with using Amazon. It's just for hobby stuff. I would much, much, much rather go to a friendly local game store. Like, uh, I know Ron and I have mentioned Dark Sphere a number of times. Um, but check there, nothing. So I was like, eh, I've got Amazon Prime. It will arrive literally in a day, so why not? Though it didn't arrive in a day because I ordered it. Um, and it took quite a while to arrive, actually. Uh, they, uh, you know, couple mix up, uh, mix ups. There was a car crash. Literally, the guy that was meant to deliver this to me got in a car crash, and I could see it from my window. And I could have gone out and gone, hey, do you have my package? But dude was in a car crash. He's got bigger things to think about right now. Well, or then, anyway. But yeah, you know. It was a box of toys. I wasn't that much in a hurry for it. <laughs> but anyway, um, that was Wasteland Warfare. Hopefully, maybe get some more minis. Uh, at some point, I will almost definitely upgrade to the resin kit because yeah more minis um and probably buy some more because <laughs> modifius do make some interesting uh stuff and some good good sculpts on their minis as well because i have seen them in person um so yeah uh that that will just about do it so just a heads up as to what is coming out on the channel um you will notice our schedule has kind of collapsed in on itself. Um, because Rome's not in the flat to edit. I can't edit to save my life. And I'm using DaVinci, uh, which I have never used before. And I have no idea what I'm doing with it. So this may not even get edited at all. So, eh, sorry about that. Anyway, what else? We do have a podcast, which we still need to record, um, which is the third best uh, view, most viewed thing on the channel now. So thank you for that so very fucking much. That was incredible. It just seeing the analytics on that just spike, I was like, what is going on here? So it seems that you guys like that. Um, so we're definitely doing more. <laughs> um so yeah, that'll probably get re recorded some point this week and get released maybe this time next week. Uh, so yeah, thank you for supporting the channel. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, do that because it does help us out and it, it, it makes us happy. <laughs> uh, our goal is for 2021 is 41 subscribers. So if you could help us do that, we would be very, very grateful. Uh, so yeah, thanks for watching, uh, wherever you are, I hope you stay safe, I hope you enjoy your hobby, um, we will catch you on the other side, goodbye.